Here's all the wheel components uh, for the casters that'll go on the cart for the surface plate. Um, what I've done, I've had these wheels for quite some time. Uh, let's get a good picture. Uh, Darnell casters. Uh, they're actually really nice casters. There's the rollers that fit in the wheels. And what I've done is originally these had a formed oval plate like most casters do that you bolt up to whatever you're going to put them on and then they had a rivet they had a hard washer and then just swedged over riveted i ground all that out removed those and you can kind of see the components right now that are in there and what I've got is this little dust shield will go over the top of here I machined these out of a loop block aluminum and now they're actually gonna fit right through there these bolts right there there's the original washers that were on them one to drop through anyway that'll drop through there this piece will suck onto there and then a nut on the inside which will sandwich the wheel nice and tight together and then once I have the assembly all put together and the nut all tightened down sandwiched down then they'll just simply just drive into there you can see the little score mark where it, uh, it's got a weld on the inside a seam you know so it'll just it'll just tap in uh, I'm gonna start masking them off and this is all bare metal right now so I'm gonna go ahead and squirt some paint on it taping it up to keep the uh, paint from getting down into the uh, the ball bearings and on the inside here if you can see what i do is just take a piece of string get it back in view here you know and then just a piece of shim stock or something you know and then i just kind of tuck the tuck the string in the crack and then cut it off and paint it and when you're done you just grab a string and pull it out and you don't you know don't have to get paint down in the ball bearings I'm going to use the hammered gold for the the main caster body and then the little uh, dirt shield cup deals. I think I'll go with the hammered gray.
Well, I got all the wheels back together, painted, ready to uh, ready for assembly, and they'll just get tapped all the way up into the socket. You know, they're kind of a little snug fit, but they'll just get tapped up flush here, ready to go. Okay, I got the I got the base all cleaned up and got the wheels all together. This is a grease hole. And that's a grease hole. I'll pump grease in them later. That'll fill the balls up in here. Um, anyway, now I'm just gonna tap them into the legs.
the plate's actually nice shape. I don't see any any big dings or anything or gouges or hammer marks. Um, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna uh, cut a disc out of this um, the Scotch Brite and put it on my little orbital sander and see if I can't polish it up a bit. Well, I think I finished it up. I decided not to paint the bottom of the plate. I just thought I'd just clean it up and uh, and go with it.
the plate is one I found on Craigslist not long ago in the Bay Area. It's a two foot by three foot. Um, they had it listed for a hundred dollars, which I thought was more than fair price. Machine Products Corporation, Detroit, Michigan. The the top ended up cleaning up. I think really well um, with the Starrett straight edge. I only had a thousandths and a half uh, feeler gauge, but everywhere on the plate I would put it, it would uh, it would pinch, you know. So I know it's fairly decent. Um, kind of the history on the stand. I live in Rio Vista, California, and for the last 50 years I've been going to the same wrecking yard. Um, it belonged to Charlie Schultings. Uh, when we moved to Rio Vista in 1964, my dad ran a machine shop and became friends with the local scrap owner, which was Charlie. And going out to his place on the weekend with my dad was like uh, going to Disneyland. Um, for my whole life, whatever I needed, metal or whatever, went and got it. And this stand, I not long ago I was out there and that's the last thing that I ever got from Charlie and probably a week after I got that from him he passed away and he's been the only wrecking yard in town <laughs> pretty much for, for a long time um, so anyway you know kind of you know when I got the stand I had no idea what I was going to do with it but I it was up on top of the pile and it wasn't all bent up and, and uh, I got it the wooden top at another scrap yard I bought a couple of Stanley Vidmars and it had the wooden top on it it was much longer weathered starting to separate on the ends uh, so I didn't really have a hard time you know cutting a smaller chunk out of it there's the final results and like I say I'm I'm happy with the way it with the way it cleaned up you know there's you know it's kind of easy to find little you know little blemishes but otherwise now I just watched a video of Tom ox tool where he just did a, a beautiful scraping job on one um, you know I decided not to go that route I was hoping this was gonna clean up good enough which which it did but yeah, the one he scraped was just absolutely beautiful.